Hello, I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man. My guest is David Smith. David is a partner within JMW's commercial litigation department and specialises in property litigation. So I know that, David, uh, you've had a successful outcome of a, of a case, the Northwood Ho uh, Solly Hull case. Just wonder if you can give us an idea of what happened, please. Yeah, it's been quite a long running thing, but, but basically um, a tenant was arguing that a Section 8 notice, which is served on tenants with rent arrears to ask them to leave uh, wasn't properly signed because it was served by a company um, and, and it had to be signed then therefore by a director witnessed by uh, somebody else. Um, and they also tried to say that the tenancy deposit, which is that these are required to be protected by law, um, was not properly protected. And so that they were in, uh, because the, the certificate that, that goes with it had to also be signed supposedly by a director before a witness, and therefore they were entitled to three times their deposit back. Um, this also would have affected Section 21 notices, which are the most common way of asking residential tenants to leave. And it actually had a really big impact because a lot of these notices and, and certificates are actually signed by agents, most of which, of course, trade as limited companies. Um, and in theory, therefore, every single deposit certificate at the start of the tenancy and every notice asking a tenant to leave at the end of the tenancy would have had to be signed by a director of the company uh, before a witness. Um, and of course, that would mean for small companies, directors pretty much couldn't go on holiday, um, or at least not all of them at the same time, and there'd have to be more than one. And for very large companies, of course, you'd have to have a director in every single office. And large corporates just don't do that, quite obviously. Um, and, um, and, and so it would have created quite substantial practical difficulties. I mean, uh, above and beyond this immediate case. And then, of course, there was the historic problem in that there are lots and lots of tenancies out there now where the deposit certificate is, is not signed in the way that this case, so with, with, or the tenant was arguing it should be signed. They have to be served within 30 days, otherwise the tenant can make a claim for up to three times their deposit. So you would have potentially hundreds, and, well, hundreds, I say thousands, tens of thousands of potential claims for tenancy deposits, which would quite possibly have driven some agents, some landlords straight into bankruptcy, given the potential number of claims that they might have had to deal with. So it was um, potentially quite a big deal if we hadn't managed to, to success, successfully win the case. And you did successfully win the case. So what does it mean for landlords now? Um, in a sense, the position is restored to what it was before. Um, Obviously, a sole landlord can sign their own notices and certificates. That's not an issue. Uh, a limited company landlord or a limited company agent or an agent trading as LP, um, any person who is authorised to sign can sign a deposit certificate and uh, a, a, a Section 8 notice. So that basically means not, not the office T-boy, not the cleaner, um, but someone whose job function or role involves signing notices and is authorised to do so. You don't need a board resolution or anything complicated. They just need to be in a role that authorises them to do this. Um, and they can sign those notices and certificates. Um, so it's kind, of, it's, kind of, it's kind of trying to simplify. I mean, there was a lot of argument about you know, how companies can act. They got a little bit... A bit. I mean, the other side used the word metaphysical. I don't like to go quite that far, but it certainly got outside the sort of the realms of, of the norm in that people were talking about, you know, is a company a real thing? And how does it, how does a company act? Because obviously it doesn't act for itself because it's a, a virtual, it's a virtual entity. Um, and we got into quite an extended, extended discussion of all of this. Um, but the reality is that companies act through people. And they act through people who are authorised to act for them. And that's not just the directors of the company, that's but all sorts of people in a company. Otherwise, large companies wouldn't be able to operate at all. Um, and the court broadly accepted that, that line of argument and said that, um, that, that an authorised person can do things on behalf of the company, provided they're acting within their reasonable authority to do so. And that, that's perfectly sensible. And David, you specialise in property litigation. So how can you and the property litigation team help landlords um, remove tenants from properties? Well, we cover the, the whole range of stuff. So, I mean, if, if a landlord has a tenant who's, who's refusing to leave or is in breach of their tenancy agreement, then, then we're, we're able to serve the necessary notices and proceed to court. Um, 
I would I'd be honest and say we, we tend, in fact, though, to specialise more in the rather more complex issues like this one, where tenants, uh, whether, whether there are things that are wrong or, or, or the situation is, is outside the normal run of the mill tenant not paying rent. But obviously we, we do both. David, thank you very much for your time and thank you for your insight as well. If you'd like to contact David, you can email insideman at jmw.co.uk or call 0161 82 81 999. I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man.